Um, hi, hello. So I had thought that since I've been binding for a couple years now, wow, it's actually been a while. <laughs> so I thought that since I've been binding for a while, it would be nice to give some tips that helped me or pretty much just give some advice and like show how I do it. And these are just what works for me. Everybody is, every body is different and you need to do what's good for you. So first of all, what is binding? Well, um, binding is usually in reference to AFAB people that want to compress their chest. You usually hear that when in relation to like trans men. You pretty much just um, wear like a tank top or a half tank type of thing. It's like an undergarment. And you don't have to be a trans man to bind. You don't even have to be non-binary. I've heard that there's some people that just are cis and want their chest to be flat. So really, this is open for anyone if you want to learn. Some people bind because it makes them feel more confident in their body. And sometimes it's more in relation to gender. It gives you euphoria, makes you feel more like yourself. And sometimes people do it for cosplay. Honestly, that's freaking cool. I wish I could do cosplay. The last time I did cosplay was for Comic-Con and it was pretty much just using stuff that I had around. And I was Chloe Price from Life is Strange. Uh, I want to go to a Comic-Con again. So before we get into the how to and what to use, let's go over a bit of history. Chest binding was popular in fashion throughout history for women due to modesty being emphasized as important. The doo-doo, I apologize if I didn't pronounce that right, I looked it up on Google Translate so it's probably not accurate. It was an early version of a bra in China that was used to flatten the chest. And in the 1920s, brassiers and bandeau were used to reduce curves and flatten chest. Binding was also used for religious reasons sometimes, such as with nuns. And these are just a couple of examples. They fit the history of sexism in fashion, not to mention the roots in anti-blackness and infantilization of women in the name of modesty, but it gave people the option to appear more androgynous or masculine. Icons like Joan of Arc and Deborah Sampson would do things to make themselves appear more masculine so they could fight in wars. So binding is not new and it's not exclusive to only transmasculine people. Transmask people have used binding as one of the ways to pass in society as a more masculine person or as a man. Some people see Joan of Arc as a possible trans person in history, well, there have been and continues to be many others making history and living their lives. Binding is now marketed and tailored to trans people or anyone who wants to bind. Binding is a part of trans history. It's a way we get to express ourselves and see ourselves. So, how do you do it? First is choosing your binder. Um, I have some different ones here, including the first one that I've actually gotten. So first of all, I know that this is the easiest thing to get, but never use ace bandages. It can mess up your tissue, it can mess with your breathing, it can hurt your lungs, your ribs. It's not a good thing to use. Never use ace bandages. And don't use underworks binders. This is my first binder that I ever got. It's an underworks binder. And I got this from Amazon. First mistake. Don't um, get binders from Amazon, especially ones like these, because they're not made for AFAB bodies. They're made for AMAB people who, I think it's called, gyne who have gynecomastia. I think that's what it's called. So if you already have something like this, um, I would say just don't wear it too often and you should be okay, but it's best to just not get these all together. Especially a lot of the binders on Amazon are bad because they're usually like labeled like lesbian, tomboy, flat chest, <laughs> that kind of thing. And um, they usually have like those clips that you see usually with like corsets and it's... It probably would make you flat, but I highly doubt that it's good for you. I think that it does more damage than anything. And if you're limited to what you can use, like if you can't get a binder at all, here are some things that you can do instead. Um, I would tend to do layers before I even knew what binding was. I would just wear layers to make my chest look smaller. I would do like a small, a small sports bra and then um, have... A tank top, maybe two tank tops, and then like a shirt and one of those button-ups. 
but like a sports bra in general would be good because it doesn't really give you that shape and sometimes it can compress. There's even like by there's, there's even bras out there that do compress and like are high neck so it evens everything out. I suggest doing that instead of getting something like this or one of those corset type of binders from Amazon because it'll be a lot easier on your body, a lot better for you. And there's also places where you can get free binders if you're just not able to afford one. I'll list that in the description because I know how much that it can help. It's binding has helped me a lot. And if you're able to afford one but you can't have it sent to where you live, I would suggest sending it to a friend or maybe getting a P.O. box and having it sent to there. Uh, here are some suggestions of like places to get binders. GC2B, there's a wide variety. They have like different colors and they have like a different range of skin tones. They have tank tops and half tank binders. They're actually made for binding. I'm going to list some other ones because I know that there are more. But there's this one brand that I found on TikTok where people actually like um, make them, like tailor them to your body. Those are probably the best bet, especially if you have a bigger chest. So, um, tank top or half kinds of binders. Well, the second binder that I got was from GC2B, and it's this one. It was a half tank. I got this because I thought it would be more discreet because it's closer to my skin tone. <laughs> I mean, it's as close as I could get at the time. This lighting is not the best, but look at that. So, this is what I got. And I loved this one because it flattens everything. It's easy to put on. So, this is the first time I've actually ever gotten a tank. And I'm wearing one right now. I got the black one. And it binds just as well as the half one that I have but also if you um, are worried about like sweating in it I would suggest getting a half because it doesn't stick to your skin as much and you don't always feel the sweat but like the binding stops here like with a regular binder so it doesn't bind like your stomach area if that's what you were wondering the rest of it is like a spandex so it like hugs your skin but it doesn't bind These three are the same size, they're a large, and this one that's tie-dye is an extra large. I got that one for swimming, so I got a size up. You can't even see where the size is because I washed it so much. That one's a medium, but don't get that one. <laughs> it's really important to get the right size, otherwise you might not be able to put it on at all. And if it's your first time wearing one or if it's a new one, like I <laughs> stretched this out. <laughs> because I've had it for so long, but it's going to be a little tight, so be aware of that. So when you're getting one, in order to get the right size, make sure you measure yourself twice. <laughs> and if you're in between sizes, I think they suggest going up a size. Just like fit the look at, honestly, look at GC2B's website. I feel like they explain it a lot better than how I'm explaining it. Now, how to put on a binder. So people have like different ways of doing it. Sometimes you can like put it on, step into it and then pull it on and then pull it over you. I can't do that. So the way that I do it, I'm gonna use my shirt to show you. If it's a half, then all you have to do 
is stick your arms through. That's the wrong hole. Stick your arms through and then um, just like stick it all over your head and it's going to be tight. So the way you do it is just work your way out and then it's probably going to get stuck right here. So you unroll it and then put it over. But if you're getting, if you wear a tank top like that, then it's probably going to be like rolled up when you first put it on. So I would suggest unrolling the non-binding part and then grabbing it by the binding part, pulling it down, and then unrolling it. So it's like, hold on, <laughs> let me show you with the actual one. So like with this, here's where the binding starts. It's going to look like that, so then you can unravel it, and then pull it down, and then adjust accordingly. Your chest is probably going to be pointed downwards, so it's important to adjust and make sure that it's pointed outwards, because even though it may look more flat when it's like this, it's better to do it like this because it's better for your chest, and it's easier to wear it longer when, it's, when you're wearing it correctly. And make sure, like, after you put it on, you stretch to, like, stretch your arms, move your body around to make sure that you can still move around in it and that it's not uncomfortable or anything. GC2B suggests that you bind for up to 8 to 10 hours. I agree with that. Try not to, um, even if you do wear it for that long, I suggest taking breaks throughout because it helps in the long run, helps you wear it longer. And don't put on a binder like right after you get out of the shower or anything like that because like when your skin's wet and you put this on, it's going to be a lot harder to put on. If you have breathing problems, like if you have asthma or just like problems with your lungs or your ribs or anything. First of all, it should probably be between your doctor because I'm not a doctor or anything, but like if you feel like you need to bind and you have those problems, I was just doing an alternative or maybe wearing a size up. And even though binding is uncomfortable, like it's not fun, it's not supposed to hurt. So if it hurts, you either have a size too small or there's something going on and you need to take it off. Never wear it to bed. I know how much it can hurt to want to like have your chest flat all day, want to bind all day and at night, but you it will mess up your body if you do that. And if you do it too often, don't wear it at night, please. And don't wear it when you're sick because I feel I think that like it would stop like it, mucus in your chest or anything, it would like clog it up or something. I, I'm, again, I'm not a doctor, but I don't think you should wear it when you're sick. <laughs> Best, most importantly, you need to listen to your body. If it hurts, if you feel like you can't breathe, take it off. Take a break, at least like 10 minutes, and just put it on later. Like sit in the bathroom, take it off, and just breathe, stretch, do whatever you need to do. Make sure you drink water on top of the stretching. If you wear it for too long or if it's too tight, you can damage your lungs and even mess up your chest so much that you probably can't even get top surgery. That's my biggest reminder for myself for if I'm ever like having a bad dysphoria day and I want to wear it for longer, I remind myself for that because it's better to take care of yourself in the long run even if you don't feel good now. And when I got my binder, I actually got this with it. It helps. Um, first thing they put on here was to how to wash it. Um, I like to hand wash mine because I feel like that makes them last longer. But it says hand wash or machine wash delicate, let dry overnight. And then you can do a machine dry to make it tighten. How to put it on. When you swim or exercise, wear a size up. Make sure you wash your binders. Um, it can be easy to just wear it all the time every day and forget that it's clothes that need to be washed <laughs> so make sure you wash it yes they stink if you wear it regularly and sweat in it come, come on 
especially if you only have one you can like wash it and leave it to dry overnight and then wear it the next day another thing if you um don't want to bind you don't have to like even if you're a trans guy um if you don't want to bind no one should tell you that you have to because you don't binding isn't a requirement to be a um trans masculine person like it's not fun <laughs> i don't really want to do this but it makes me feel better about myself okay um please be safe while you're binding um if this is your first time doing it uh all i say is that you need to listen to your body and take care of yourself drink water stretch take breaks wash it <laughs> that's pretty much the whole thing condensed in like five seconds also real quick i've been working on this video for a month even though i could probably have gotten it out in two weeks because of burnout and mental health related stuff but i just looked at my stats and apparently i have 25 subscribers um hello thank you for sticking around and listening to what i have to say i know that a lot of people wouldn't consider 25 a lot but it's a lot to me i honestly didn't think i'd get past one so i appreciate you watching and subscribing and all of that kind of jazz happy binding hope this helped i hope that uh you took something from this and be nice to people thanks for watching